Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with ShopSaber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. On our last video, we actually made a pod table to open up a lot of different fixturing capabilities with your ShopSaber CNC router. Now we're going to use that pod table and some pods and we're going to make a solid wood furniture part that has full edge machining. This is going to be really neat. Let's get started. The machine we'll be using today is a ShopSaber IS series CNC router in a 4x8 configuration. It's one of our machine tool grade CNC models and here's what that means. It means the frames are all made out of structural steel, they're all welded, all the machining's done on an aerospace mill. We use precision ball screws and X, Y, and Z axis. We have precision contour guide rails. We have our Super Z system. All of those things go into a machine tool grade CNC router. A couple options are required for this specific application. One is actually, of course, a vacuum table, and because we're using fixturing, I prefer the phenolic option. The other is part locator pins, and here's why. Part locator pins are the key to quick changeover, so I can put that pod board on here, do my machining, take it off, switch back over to nested base manufacturing with very, very little changeover. And of course, these applications use a lot of tools, so it always makes a lot of sense to have an ATC, an automatic tool changer, on the machine. So that's why we've got it. And of course, we're going to use this machine for panel processing, so it has to have a dust dock because it picks up sawdust so well. What ties all this technology together is the simplicity of the ShopSaber CNC machine control. A lot of our customers with zero CNC experience make their first part within a couple hours. Before we start cutting, let's go in the office and let's take a look at the software. This video is about fixturing and I really wanted to show you a strategy for making a solid wood part that required it to be elevated in order to do the machining on it. And this is a great uh, example of using our pod table. But you know, beforehand we had to, had to process our blanks. So I, I've got this piece of wood that's been glued together. It's about an inch and three sixteenths thick. It's, it's a little rough and it's not smooth. So the first thing I need to do is plane it, and I'm going to show you how to do that with our pod table. You know, one of the first steps we learn in woodworking is how we straighten material out, and that's whether you're doing CNC or whether you're doing manual. So if I take a board that has a twist or curvature and I run it through a planer on both sides, it's smooth, but it still has that twist. So I have to use a process first that flattens that out, and it's called facing. It could be edge joining if it's an edge. It could be facing if it's a surface, and that might be done with something like a joiner. Then once you create that flat surface, the planer produces a surface parallel to it. So that's how you get stock straightened out. Well, look at the same way. I basically got a blank that's glued together. It's over thickness, and it's you can't hold it with vacuum because it's not flat enough unless I have a special fixture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pod table. I'm going to actually uh, isolate where I want the part to be held down with gasketing. The gasketing sticks up slightly higher so it really seals around the edge and then I remove all the plugs in between there. So now I can lay that panel on there, turn the vacuum, and it holds it flat. So once it's held in place then all I do is create a facing tool path and plane it to it becomes a flat surface. So let's take a look at this. Here's the tool path right here. Actually here's the blank. It's roughly 31 by 21. Uh, if we look at this, you'll see it relative how it is on the table. What you see here is actually a, a, a template drawing of that pod table itself, so you can tell where everything goes. There's the part locator pins. And, and what I'm going to do is basically put gasket underneath this and open up the plugs inside of there. And when I lay that part down, even though it's a little bit irregular, it'll hold it down. And the reason is because the gasket's sticking up, so it seals. So the first thing I'm going to do is hold that in place. Well, what do we want to do? Well, we probably want to create a flat surface and, and, and save as much material as possible. Well, what does that tool path look like? Well, it's probably going to be this. The way I started, let's go back and, and let's, uh, let me turn this off so you don't see that. Basically, I just drew a, a tool path and I would just want the fly cutter to fly cut that. And if you look at it, I set it to depth zero. Okay, so it's, it's, I'm not cutting any depth. If you look over here, I've said I want to touch that off to the top of the material, the surface. So the idea is I've got this tool path. I'm going to touch the tool off to the top of it, and I'm going to run that program with zero depth. 
So it's going to hit the high spots, and that's a place to start. If we look at the simulation, you'll see that it creates that, all right? Now, so I, let's say I, I run that toolpath, and, and maybe it's okay, maybe it's not, maybe I need to take a little more off, so I just incrementally say, okay, I need to take off 30 thousandths, I do that. My idea is to try to get a perfect surface and, and, and lose as little material as possible. It probably makes sense when you do this to cut the best side first so that you can, you can take it down to where it's perfect. Then when we turn it over, we'll cut it to thickness. And, and if there's defects on the inside, they probably don't matter. So this is our first step to actually create this, uh, to face this stock. So that's like running it through a big facer. Okay, well, what do we do after that? The next step then is we actually want to cut it to thickness. Let's take a look at that. Okay, now we take that smooth surface, we turn it upside down back onto the pod table. And you can see its position here. I've located it with part locator pins. Let's go ahead and turn that pod table layer off. All right. And, and once again, we're going to do a facing tool pad, but the setup's different. If I come over here, this time I'm touching it to the what's the machine bed, which is the top of our pod table, okay? And then let's look at our tool pad. It's basically the same uh, geometry, but the tool path is different. Let's open this up. All right, so I'm going to take off an eighth of an inch, which is going to leave uh, the finished thickness. Use an inch and a half cutter. So now once this gets cut, let's run simulation on it, you can see it. Once this gets cut, preview that. I've got a panel that's flat on the bottom and now it's flat on the top and it's uniform thickness. So what I've really done is I've used this pod table as a, as a great big planer. What you see on the screen is the geometry that's required to machine this. Now let's think about what we're doing. We've got a piece of material that's about an inch thick. Um, it's oak, it's glued up. Now we're going to cut it out and we're, first off we're going to cut kind of an irregular shape and we're going to put an edge on it. So we're actually using a three quarter inch straight cutter and I really, really like that because it does really well with solid wood, especially thick stuff. So it's, it's, it's a fairly heavy cut. That doesn't mean you need to get really aggressive on feed rates and stuff. So I, I'm fairly conservative on that. Well, how's it set up? Well. This rectangle right here, there's actually a six pods and here's a pod here, 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 and here. So that's sitting on six of those vacuum pods and that holds it in place. So the first thing I want to do is I want to rough the material out. Now there's something I wanted to talk to you that sometimes we don't say much about it in terms of solid wood machine, but we have to worry about grain direction. Sometimes when we come across an end, it chips. So we just have to plan for that. So for instance, back here, that red tool pad that you see there's actually going to be the final cut with that uh, bull nose tool. Well, I'm going to do that prior to cutting the back edge off. So if I get any chips there, that gets cut off in the last process. So we don't really have to worry about that with panel processing, but with this we do. So what would we do on this? Well, let's go to simulation. Probably the first thing we'll do is get rid of some material. So here's, here's basically what I'm trying to do. So we'll put those tool paths in first, and all we're doing is getting rid of material. Okay, and then we'll do the next things, we'll do a profile, so that cuts that out. And there's our scrap, we just dropped the scrap off. So now we've got our piece roughed out. All right, now the next thing we wanna start working on is the edge profile themselves. So let's take a look at that. There's the first pass, the second pass, and the final pass. We'll just run that. Now what that does is that actually gives us that ball nose profile on there and then finally we do the rear path, that's this, that cuts that off real smooth and that gives us that real smooth back edge. So it's really not that difficult to create uh, an elevated part like that. You just have to realize you're cutting solid wood and you have to be concerned about grain direction because sometimes you'll get a chip so you have to allow for that. Now we're ready to actually go make this top.
Our solid oak furniture part came out really, really nice. The edge finishes are beautiful. And I wanted to do a video that employed pods so that you could see how you fix your more complex products. I had a great time doing this video. If you want to see more of these videos, just hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.